Okay, it's a nice, well, it's morning on Saturday in England, what can I say? Anyway, um, I want to cover something I've been doing. I want to try and break it into small sections, as if possible. So I have this G5N, really quite like it. I'm going to play in a gig with it on Sunday. And um, I want a B1 X4 because I love those units. They're tiny. They do almost everything you need. Um, but the G5X is a guitar FX, not a bass pedal. So how can we solve this? Well... I could take my B1X, and I probably will for, for safety, but what I did was I looked at what's contained inside the pedal. So the B1X4 is on the left, and the G5N's on the right, and if you want to know how I got these things out of it, I can let you know, but it's covered in other videos. So what this does is say, oh, 160 comp is on the bass pedal. It's not on the guitar pedal. The first thing has is acoustic simulation, which isn't actually on the bass pedal over. Then you get a series of the cabinets and amps. I'm not interested in that. The filter may be. Air is common to both. Not that interested in the cabinets again because that's all happening in the amps at the church I play. Uh, analog delay, that's rather cool. Then a bass cry. Yeah, okay, I'll have that. That might be okay, maybe. Um, bass driver, maybe. Um, and so I basically choose. I look at this comparison, what I did was I put it into a file, then I edited it some more, yeah? So let's have a look at the edited version. Uh, again, I'll try and skip bits, but leave it logically sensible or cohesive. So let's look at the compare. So I've managed to break it down into this many extra effects I want. 160 comp, I love compressors particularly, um, makes the bass less noisy uh, when, when you play, uh, you know, the different energy in the strings. And... Tune is useful, pitch is useful. Um, the glam comp is pretty good, but it's a bit noisy, but it's good though. Good for, for fretless. And any compressor is pretty good in general. So those are the ones that I wanted, yeah. So there's 37 extra effects, yeah. So then what I do, I pull down one of the latest versions of Mundrill's code. Uh, you can get that from his Zoom page. I'll put the link in. Then I make a subdirectory pants, I love that name, and in it I put the two Python files from above, his Zoom ZT2 and Zoom GUI. Why do I do that? Because um, he has some later software in his one to handle the acoustic guitars, which are the MDLs you can see over here, yeah? Uh, and I decided to put a couple of those on for the sheer lols, okay, uh, from an A1X. So let's just start this program very, very quickly. Uh, Zoom Z2 GUI. It's Python 3 on mine because Python 2 is the standard. Okay, and you get this sort of thing coming up. Ignore the errors. And now it's connected to the pedal off the screen. It's in PC mode. And what you do is you say select effect. And because I've put all of these in the same directory, so I forgot to mention, I, I then copy the ZD2s into the common directory. Okay, where do I get them from? Well, you can either pull them out of the pedal or you can go to my page. And under a GCE3, for example, which is the little emulator, in the derived data, you can find, for example, all the A1X4 effects. Uh, he said, well, I clicked on it, what happened? Yeah, there we are. So all of the ZD2s are the um, effects for uh, a zoom. So that's where you can find those. Or you can go to the B1X4, I think it is, to get the, come on, B1X4. And in there, you can find the ZD2s. There we are. So what I do is I copy the ones I want into this directory here. And then I can say, okay, I want to add that one. So then you say, open the file. And it tells you that, and this is why I show you. That. See, here you, you can see it's got a top bit set. A bit complicated, but it's basically got this high bit here set. And it tells you that, this is version 1, group 20 of AG model, and that's the description. And if you click that install, it will install it onto the pedal. Uh, I've already done that. Sometimes you need to reboot your pedal. Um, anyway, I've done that. That's it. So that's what I did. I basically took Mantra's program. I worked out the difference between what's on the base I want and what's on the G5N. Maybe I might need to, to delete some effects off the G5N, but in a moment, a stock G5, G5N plus... 37 base pedal models has worked okay so you run the program like that and then next thing i do is i ran my program but i noticed a problem so in my zoom zd2 version which is it is derived from manuels i needed to put what i call dirty shooking hacking 
and this is because Mundrel says that there's 28 bits in the um, patch when there's really 32 for the ID, in my opinion. These these A1X4 parameters, so these are the acoustic guitars, it will say the group is 34, but actually when I run it manually on the pedal, it needs to be 162. It's, it's 128 more because that top um, bits have not been set and they need to be set, yeah, and that's the problem. Um, now, you also get problems for... Um, the rhythm and the loopers because I don't know if it's a similar issue but they 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 don't exist as ZD2s you can't pull them out and it causes a problem so at the moment you know that's that so now what I would do then is I run my B1X4 so I just got to make certain when I come to run it so I'll, I'll just pause this you don't want to see this I'll run it and we'll see what it does okay so we've made the sort of hack in two places inside the file the other place we had to do it is up here where we're first putting the uh, FX in. Let's just check the what it's doing. Hang on. Get file. So when we get the file, our, we have to check if ever we get this corner case of 34. And if we do, then we make it 128 more. And I'm sure there's more, but if we could just, if I could work out how to make this thing 32 bit, that would be cool. Anyway, I'll leave that running in the background. And what's happening here, if we do ls minus one star dot zd2, uh, it would help if I could type, uh, pipes into word count minus l. Then we've got 73 so far, 74, 75. And if we tail minus f the MIDI log, we can see what it's doing. So it's just reading the stuff in, boom, where's another one coming in, boom, 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 boom. So it's reading in all the ZD2s, first of all. So it interrogates the pedal to get the ZD, ZT2 list. Um, then it says for each of those, go get the file, and that's this bit here, um, get the file. We hack this to get a consistent value, and then if, uh, so then we create a lookup table from that, then when we come to get the patches, we do a similar hack that if we have this 34 business, then we make it 162. Um, now, I don't know if it's going to work, but it should do it. And, and again, I've raised an issue with Munjuel. Uh, I know he's busy on something else at the minute, but hopefully we can look into this or I'll, I'll try and hack it. Um, but the other thing I had to do different to him is that as G5N has a 736 value for its patch, and this is smaller on a B1X4. So what I do, I think, I think it's in this one here. Uh, is it this one? When I read the thing in, oh no, it is in this one here. It must be a model somewhere at the beginning. So when I read the, uh, there is, that's all the logic there, I see it. So when I read the pedal in, I ask, who the hell are you? And then I say, oh, if you're that, you're a G5N. If you're that, you're a G3N. And somewhere I set the patch. Oh, I know where I get the patch size from. I actually ask the machine itself. So the machine knows on the modern ones how big things are. Somewhere I've got the code for it. Yeah, look, it's, it's patch size. When you send a particular message, 44, uh, it's had Lewis Hamilton to it. Um, basically, it comes back and says the patch size is the seventh byte times 128 plus the sixth byte. The bank size is that, and the number of patches is that. So that's how I know that the patch size is not constant. It depends on the machine model. And it's another thing I have to do the church Mundrell's code. I did ask him if we can have a parameter to set that, because uh, ideally I don't want to be separate to his code. I want to use his code uh, via an external mechanism and then just add my GUI on top. That's all I want to do, yeah? Um, so I'll leave that running, and then we'll see how this works. Okay, so I swapped to the non-debug version of the program because um, actually the debugger was getting killed by PC. It looks, it looks like Pac-Man FX. It's some sort of um, QT thing. So this one has got what I want to play tomorrow. I like this particular patch setting. And if I click here, I put that back to Rack Comp. So what I was trying to do before it crashed was to look at the AG model. So now when I click the 12 string nylon, I'll stick it there. Okay, it comes up on the screen and it comes up, yay, it comes up on the actual uh, FX as well. So that's worked, yeah? So that dirty hack, and you see 400, 162? So before we're getting 34, 
And now what I say is, well, look, if you're 128, sorry, sorry, if you're 34, add on 128. Now, this isn't right. We can get this number directly from the patch. Well, I think we can get it from the patch. We can definitely get it from the ZD2. So that's what I've asked him once with a look at. Can, can he look at the 32-bit versus the 28-bit? Because it's definitely right. Um, you know, it does the right thing. And that's turned up on the display. And I think you, these use quite a bit of FX, actually. And that's turned up on the display. So that's cool, yeah? That's all I really wanted to show. So what, what have I done? The takeaway here is I took the FX that are in the B1X4, the ones I want. I used Mundwell's later version of Zoom ZD2 to add those into the Zoom G5N. So now it's behaving like a G5N and also a B1X, or mostly at least, the things I want. There are 128 spare patches on there. What I'll work on soon, um, this can have, what, nine effects, I think, and a B1X can have five, possibly six, I, I push seven. It depends on the kind of patch you're putting in. Um, so what I'll be doing is working on something that looks at these uh, values, and if it sees, say, a modeler as in a amp model or a cabinet model i'll just say okay maybe you want to get rid of those and then we can convert um using the techniques i'm using here to collapse it from a g5n patch into a into a gb1x type thing and that allows us to do two things we so what i'll probably do is try and write a button up here that says convert to b1x or something um but anyway, at the moment, this is pretty cool. So now I have acoustic guitars on the G5, and if I want, I have all of the bass effects that I need. Um, so this is the patch I'll be playing tomorrow. Let's have a quick look at it. So Exciter, I gave a little bit of a bass boost, a bit of a treble boost, um, keep the volume down. The chorus is really nice on the fretless, so you put the depth up. Rate, you don't want it too high. You just want to have that nice beating coming in. Um, tone is fairly high up at that point. Then the chamber is like um, a bit of reverb. I, I, I'll use the foot switch, and that's one of the benefits of the G5N, is it's much easier to switch individual FX on off. You've got FS1 to 4, so live you can sort of click that one off. Um, then I use the limiter um, because I don't want to, you know, I want to try and make the uh, sound. Uh, fairly even throughout the range, yeah. The ZNR, because that removes noise, I don't really need it with the uh, EMGs, but I like to have it on there just in case, okay. And then the pedal volume, so again, I can do some swells or whatever. So this this is all set up for tomorrow now, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed seeing that you can convert your G5N to a bass processor if you want. And um, that's that's all for the minute. So thank you for watching. Uh, as ever, if you want to know more about these pedals or you want to do something specific, drop me a line in the comments because um, I, I know what I want from it. And for me, it's more autistic fun, yeah? But you might want something practical and something you can use in the real world, yeah? And, and if I can do it for you or help you to do it, then great. Okay, thanks then. Bye-bye.